Hi, I'm Red Myron. I'm a minister through Pathways of Light, and I've been a Course in Miracles student for 40 years now. This year, I'm going through the lessons, and I'm asking Jesus to clarify for me. And then I'm writing from that clarity, whatever it is that comes into my mind. And that's what I'm sharing with you today. So let's get started. Today, I'm looking at lesson 102. I share God's will for happiness for me. Paragraph one, you do not want to suffer. You may think it buys you something and may still believe a little that it buys you what you want. Yet this belief is surely shaken now, at least enough to let you question it and to suspect it really makes no sense. It is not gone as yet, but lacks the roots that once secured it tightly to the dark and hidden secret places in your mind. All through A Course in Miracles, Jesus talks about our happiness and how this is what God wants for us. He repeats this, uh, this idea throughout the text and in the lessons. In fact, he talks about our happiness something like 380 times, according to the concordance. I didn't realize this until now and noticed it only because I was looking for a certain quote. I was amazed at how often Jesus encourages us to be happy, but more amazed that I had not noticed it before. Maybe this means that I'm now ready to accept that happiness is God's will and my function. Thinking about it though, I realized something. When I shifted a couple of years ago, the most significant change was one of peace and happiness. Nowadays, the only times when I lose that remarkable state is when I slip back into a story. <clears throat> For instance, when something happens to a loved one and I worry, I can become immersed in their story. If that happens, I start thinking of the world as real. This immediately throws me out of the kingdom and I lose that remarkable peace and happiness. I see that happiness is tied to accepting that there is no world and we're not in it. In chapter six, Jesus says, how else can you find joy in a loveless place except by realizing that you're not there. You cannot be anywhere God did not put you and God created you as part of him. That, that is both where you are and what you are. It is completely unalterable. It is total inclusion. You cannot change it now or ever. It is forever true. It is not a belief, but a fact. Well, he's pretty certain about that, isn't he? So we need to become certain about it as well. Paragraph two, today we try to loose its weakened hold still further and to realize that pain is purposeless without a cause and with no power to accomplish anything. It cannot purchase anything at all. It offers nothing and does not exist. And everything you think it offers you is lacking in existence like itself. You have been slave to nothing. Be you free today to join the happy will of God. When we accept that there is no world and the ego has never actually occurred, we will be free of our fear of God. We will recognize that guilt has no cause and so our fear was unfounded. God has only ever loved us. Without the fear of God, we will see no reason to punish ourselves with pain and suffering. This will free us from our self-inflicted slavery to nothing. Every thought that brings fear and anger with it comes only from the ego and has no power outside our belief in its existence. And in chapter six, Jesus tells us the full awareness of the atonement then is a recognition that the separation never occurred. The ego cannot prevail against this because it is an explicit statement that the ego never occurred. 
Okay, so paragraph three. For several days, we will continue to devote our periods of practicing to exercises planned to help you reach the happiness God's will has placed in you. Here is your home, and here your safety is. Here is your peace, and here there is no fear. Here is salvation. Here is rest at last. Paragraph four. Begin your practice periods today with this acceptance of God's will for you. I share God's will for happiness for me, and I accept it as my function now. Then seek this function deep within your mind, for it is there, awaiting but your choice. You cannot fail to find it when you learn it is your choice and that you share God's will. Paragraph five. Be happy, for your only function here is happiness. You have no need to be less loving to God's son than he whose love created him as loving as himself. Besides these hourly five-minute rests, pause frequently today to tell yourself that you have now accepted happiness as your one function, and be sure that you are joining with God's will in doing this. Another thing that Jesus repeats in the Course is that the ego speaks first and loudest. This does not mean that it is right, just that it is frantic to keep our attention. It is frantic because once we stop listening to it, we will realize that it has no reality. And without our belief, it will not exist. The ego is never as loud and persistent as when we start listening to the Holy Spirit instead of it. I ask myself which voice I want to believe, the voice of fear or the voice of love. Thank you so much for sharing this lesson with me. Thank you for listening to my, watching my video. And if you found it helpful, then please like it. And if you, um, if you haven't yet, uh, please subscribe. So I'll be back tomorrow with another lesson.